Hi, welcome to the third video in my series on the continuous uniform distribution. And in the previous videos, what we've looked at is the shape of it and the fact that its probability density function is defined as such, where we've got this constant k equal to 1 over b minus a. And what I want to show you in this particular video is how we calculate the expected mean, the variance of the distribution, and also look at the cumulative distribution function. So let's start then with the expected mean. Now the expected mean is often written as E of x for short. So let's just write that down, E of x. And what we would expect is, because this distribution is symmetrical, it's the value in the middle here. So to get that value in the middle, it's just going to be the mean of the two n values, a and b. So you'd add them together and divide by 2. So that's the expected mean, e of x. And the other thing we want to look at is the variance. Okay, now the variance, often written for short as var x. Well, for this one, it can be shown, I'm just giving you this without proof at the moment, okay? I'll prove it to you in another video if you'd like to uh, just check it out. But essentially, just try and learn this, that it turns out to be b minus a, all squared, divided by 12. Okay? Now, when it comes to looking at the cumulative distribution function, capital F of x, let's just check out the sketch again. What do we mean by the cumulative distribution function? Well, we should be familiar with the fact that it's given by capital F of x. And let's just write it down here. If this is x, capital F of x gives the probability of being less than or equal to an observed value x. So f of x. And that be represented by this shaded area. So if x is a value that lies in this interval between a and b, then f of x, the commutative distribution function, represents the probability that x is less than or equal to your observed value. So, in this example, if it's represented by that area of that rectangle, then it's got to be k times that length there. k times that length being x minus a. And we've already seen that k is 1 over b minus a. And so if we substitute that into here, 1 over b minus a times x minus a just leaves us with x minus a all over b minus a. So the commutative distribution function comes in three parts. If we just define it first of all as f of x, what does it equal? Well, we've seen that if x lies between a and b, it's this value here. So we'll just write that in first of all, x minus a over b minus a. That's when x lies in that interval between a and b. But if it's before a, what's the probability of getting a value less than a? Well, it's zero. So it's zero when x is less than a. And when x is an observation greater than b, the chances of getting something less than this value up here, say, is guaranteed. It's guaranteed because it's going to lie in this interval here. So this will be 1 when x is greater than b. And so we've got 
three values there that define f of x, the commutative distribution function. Okay, well, those are results that you should try and learn. And what I've got here is an example, very simple example, just based on these results. If the continuous random variable x is distributed uniformly over the interval 10 to 14, then what I want you to find is essentially what e of x is, okay, what the variance of x is, var x for short, and also to define the commutative distribution function, capital F of x. So, if you'd like to have a go at that, just pause the video, come back when ready, and uh, I'll run through the solutions. Okay, welcome back if you did have a go. Let's see how you got on. Well, with the expected mean E of x, we've got the value of A here is going to be the 10, and the value of B is going to be 14. So, E of x would be the mean of these two values. In other words, 10 plus 14 divided by 2. So you've got 24 divided by 2, which is 12. As for the variance of x, var x, we know that it is, according to this formula, b minus a all squared divided by 12. So it's going to be 14 minus 10 all squared divided by 12. And if you work that out, what have we got? We got 4 here squared, which is 16 over 12. 16 over 12 reduces down to 4 thirds. Now for the commutative distribution function then, f of x, it comes in three parts. We know that it's going to be 0 if x is less than the lower limit here, 10. And over the interval 10 to 14, it's going to be given by this part, okay? So it's going to be x minus a being 10, all divided by b minus a. 14 minus 10, so that's going to be 4. And that's going to be the case when x is any value between 10 and 14. And when x is greater than 14, we have 1 as the probability. And so we combine all of those to give us f of x, okay? Capital F of x, the commutative distribution function. Okay, so a very brief tutorial there just on these ideas of how we calculate E of x, the variance of x, and the commutative distribution function, big F of x. Now, in the next tutorial, what I'll do is carry on with this kind of theme, but we'll look at slightly harder questions involving these results. Now, as usual, the best place that you can view this series is on my website. Once you're looking at this video in my series, you should find above this video links to other videos in the series.